The founding document of America, the Declaration of Independence, is premised on the fact that our rights come from our Creator rather than the government. In the 20th century, a false view of government began to take hold which said that there was supposed to be a wall of separation between the church and the state, an absolute separation that ensured a completely secular government. But that idea was widely out of step with the founding principles of our nation and of the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment was designed to keep the government out of the affairs of the church and to prevent a national church but it was never meant to keep God and Christians out of government. George Washington was the president of the Constitutional Convention and later the president of the United States. As he left office, Washington said, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that man claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness. But in the 20th century, American school children were taught a false view of a godless government, and many Christians adopted that view as well. But Romans 13 shows us that government is given its authority by God himself. Neither God nor America's founders ever wish for us to disconnect one from the other. The church has compartmentalized its faith from influencing our nation far too long now, just as America's leaders compartmentalize their faith from their politics. That needs to change. Where are today's William Wilberforces? We Christians need to establish some priorities in order to see truth and goodness brought back into our politics. First, we must repent. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We need to acknowledge our sinfulness before a holy God and we must repent of our apathy and of our false separation of God and government and of our failure of courage to confront lies. Second, we must pray. Pray for God to raise up faithful leaders who have a firm rooting in Jesus Christ and his word and a strong commitment to living it out in the life of our nation. And third, we have to identify, encourage, and support those potential leaders. Our churches and pastors need to equip Christians with a right understanding of culture and government, something that has been woefully lacking. Perhaps God may even call you. Just think what the Lord might do with a new spiritual army of William Wilberforce's, George Washington's, and Abraham Kuyper's, who have a thorough understanding of God's word and of the principles of governance.